Hello and welcome to an unboxing and setup guide for the Gator GH DVR 355-Cam. In this video I'll provide a quick overview of its features, show what's inside the box and show you how to install and set up the Gator Dash Cam. We'll now take a closer look at the Dash Cam and accessories. Here we have the Gator GH DVR 355 with 16GB microSD card pre-installed. Underneath the foam insert and cardboard divider is a mini USB cable, 12 and 24 volt power adapter, the mounting bracket, and the manual. Let's have a quick look at the GH DVR 355 dash cam. The GH DVR 355 is simple. We first connect the included suction mounting bracket to the dash cam, like so. Peel off the plastic cover and mount the dash cam to the windscreen of your vehicle, typically behind the rear view mirror, ensuring it has a clear view of the front of the vehicle. Plug the mini USB cable to the dash cam, run the cabling through the car and finally insert the 12 and 24 volt power adapter to the power socket of your vehicle. We're now going to run through how to operate the dash cam and what each of the settings do. The dash cam must be connected to power at all times to operate. The internal battery on the dash cam is designed to provide enough power to save the last recorded video when the power is disconnected and to retain the dash cam memory settings such as time and date. So once we connect power, the dash cam will automatically boot on and start recording. When the dash cam is recording, we can press the lock button on the side to lock the current recording, which will show a key symbol on the screen. And the arrow button will toggle audio recording, which will show you this symbol when disabled. To stop the recording, we would simply press the OK button on the side. You need to stop the recording function in order to access the menu. We can open the menu of the dash cam by pressing the menu button on the left side. This menu button will bring up the settings menu for the current mode and we can use the arrow buttons to navigate the menu. Pressing the OK button on the side will automatically open the currently selected setting. First on the video menu is the resolution. We recommend using 1080p as this will provide the best video quality. Loop recording is when it saves a new video file every set interval. You can set the file save interval to 1, 2, 3 or 5 minutes depending on your preference. You can play around with the exposure, which is essentially the brightness of the video. Generally, leave that at zero, but you may need to change it depending on the light conditions in your driving environment. Record audio allows you to turn off recording of the in-cabin audio. The date stamp function will watermark the date and time on the corner of all your recorded videos. G sensor is if you want to adjust the impact detection sensitivity of your dash cam. High sensitivity will detect small impacts, while low sensitivity will detect larger impacts. Each time the G-Sensor is activated, this will securely save the video file when driving. If we click the menu button in this menu, it'll bring us to the global setup menu. Enabling park mode will have the dash cam automatically boot on and start recording when it detects your car getting physically knocked or moved when parked. You may have to adjust the date and time on your dash cam when you first use it. Once clicked, the day will first be selected. You can use the arrow keys to go up and down to the selected day. Once the day is selected, press the OK button and it'll bring you to the month. Again, using the arrow keys to change the month and pressing the OK button to move on to the next part. Once you have looped around to the day, you can press the menu button and it'll save the day. Screensaver is the time it takes before your dash cam screen turns off. 
If you find the dash cam screen distracting, you can set it to one of the timers and this will simply turn off the screen and continue recording. You also have the option for turning off the beeping sound and changing the language of your dash cam if you wish. Frequency is a setting that prevents flicker of the streetlights depending on the country you're in. It is automatically set for Australia and should be left at 50 Hz. We can also format the SD card, which should be done every two to three months and restore factory default settings. If we would like to change the settings of the camera feature, we'd first need to exit the settings menu by pressing the menu button and then click the mode button to switch to the camera mode. Then the menu button will open up the photo menu settings. These settings will allow you to change photo mode specific features such as photo resolution, quality and capture mode. If we press the mode button on the photo mode, it'll bring us to the playback mode. If you're on the video mode, you would press the mode button twice to get to the playback mode. Here we can view, delete and protect video files that have been recorded to the SD card. The OK button is used to play back recorded footage while the menu button gives us the option to protect and delete recordings. Now if you want to retrieve footage from your Gator dash cam, there are two options of doing so. We can simply plug in the dash cam to the computer using the mini USB to USB cable and clicking mass storage device on the dash cam. This will allow us to look inside the dash cam's storage like a USB device. The other way is using a micro SD card adapter and taking the SD card out of the dash cam and putting it in the adapter and then plugging that into the PC. Make sure the dash cam is disconnected from power before taking out the SD card. I do recommend that you have a flick through the manual before using this product as it will contain a lot of extra information and troubleshooting. That sums up the unboxing and setup guide for the Gator GHDVR355. You can stay up to date on the latest products by subscribing to this channel and visiting our website, gatordriverassist.com.